Tonight in 7 News, Queensland's COVID-free streak over. Hospitals and aged care homes across Greater Brisbane locked down after a doctor tests positive why she wasn't vaccinated. The scramble to contact trace the cafe, gym and pub the woman visited while infectious. The new high-powered diplomatic gang of four, Australia's international vaccine pledge to Asia. Incredible escape, a woman attacked by a shark before swimming and walking to safety. And the luck of the Irish as Brisbane turns green ahead of St Patrick's Day. Live from Brisbane, 7 News with Katrina Blowers. Good evening. Queensland's long-running COVID-free streak is over, with a Brisbane doctor testing positive after treating patients with the highly contagious UK strain. The virus spread within the Princess Alexandra Hospital, sparking questions about its coronavirus protocols and the state government's vaccine program. Masks back on at hospitals, several venues closed as another COVID threat emerges. But I don't want everyone to be alarmed at present. After 60 days without community transmission, one case at the Princess Alexandra Hospital has authorities scrambling. It is a doctor who assessed two COVID positive patients. The doctor treated those two patients who have the UK strain of COVID-19 early Wednesday morning. That afternoon she had a second shift at the PA working in various parts of the hospital until early Thursday morning. Late that night the woman developed mild symptoms and on Friday morning was tested. Those results came back positive yesterday afternoon. She is very well um, and uh, she's concerned like the rest of us. This has been uh, very quick from uh, the contact to the diagnosis. Contact tracers worked through the night, learning the doctor visited Cooparoo McDonald's early Thursday morning. That afternoon she went to a West End cafe and later a Greenslopes gym and the Stones Corner Hotel. The woman's colleagues, patients, friends and family are also being tracked down. But how the virus spread in such a controlled environment is a mystery. The doctor was wearing the right protective equipment when she treated the two positive patients. No breaches have been identified, but the Princess Alexandra Hospital's COVID protocols will still be subject to intense scrutiny. The vaccine program is also being questioned. At the PA, there have already been 1,615 staff that have received their first vaccine. Half of the 3,862 PA hospital staff that qualify for the rollout's first phase. The doctor at the centre of this latest case hadn't yet been given hers. It beggars belief why this doctor wasn't vaccinated in the first place. All up, more than 18,400 doses have been administered statewide. Only 28% of the current stock that the Queensland Government hold has been put into the arms of Queenslanders. It's a, a slow and steady process to get this right. For three days, non-essential visitors are banned at all Greater Brisbane Hospitals, aged care facilities, disability services and correctional centres. Everyone inside those places must also wear masks. Small steps the State Government hopes will prevent a major outbreak. The Premier says the next 72 hours are critical in detecting and stopping the spread of the virus. There was only 36 hours between the time when this doctor was exposed to COVID and when her symptoms began to show. It's an incredibly tight window and one the state government hopes is small enough to limit the spread and prevent another lockdown. All right, let's hope so. Thank you, Mackenzie. Let's go live to Georgie Chumley now. And Georgie, other states are yet to react. Katrina, that's right. Victoria is considering reclassifying Greater Brisbane as an orange zone, which means anyone entering the state would need an exemption and must isolate and get tested until they receive a negative result. It's also resulted in, in an AFLW match between the Brisbane Lions and Collingwood being relocated from Brisbane to Melbourne to protect health and safety of players. And there will be no crowds at that match. Now, just in the past couple of minutes here at the Morning After Cafe in West End, a deep clean has commenced. 
just here. That's something that's required under the state government and the cafe says they'll be working with Brisbane City Council to see when they can reopen. The cleaners say it will be a job that will take three to four hours here this evening. Now it'll be a massive job as well for contact tracers tonight. They're preparing for another busy night as they try and work to contain this outbreak. At the Stones Corner Hotel, it seemed like business as usual. Cheers! Patrons unaware of a COVID breach. No, I had no idea at all. So hopefully they uh, clean the table since then. Regular Jason Drake concerned he's been compromised. Yes, I think I might have been, yes. I might have to go on a two-week lockdown. You know? I don't know. One of four major COVID exposure sites across Brisbane from Thursday. A pub, a gym, a cafe and a hospital. A big exercise in contact tracing underway at the moment as we speak at the PA hospital, identifying uh, all residents, um, uh, or all patients I should say, and all staff who may have been in contact with the doctor. She worked a late shift at the PA while infectious. Then early Thursday morning between 3.10 and 3.20 a.m. she drove through McDonald's Cooparoo. That afternoon she went to the morning after cafe in West End between 2 and 3.15. Usually bustling on a Saturday, today closed and cancelling bookings. It's pretty alarming. Of most concern, between 5.45 and 7 p.m. the doctor did a group class at Stones Corner Corporate Box Gym. Now closed for deep cleaning with 11 people in quarantine. Disappointment that we might have to go back into lockdown. Her final stop, the Stones Corner Hotel, between 7 and 7.45pm. At the moment, no one said anything, thinking, oh, here we go again, another lockdown. If you were in those locations at those times, you must get tested and isolate for 14 days. Anyone who was at the gym between 7 and 9pm after the doctor left are being urged to monitor symptoms. The combination of sharing equipment and breathing heavily in an enclosed space has seen super spreader events in gyms overseas. And authorities are concerned it could happen here too. Testing clinics so far flowing freely without delay. Oh, it's a very, very quick process. Taking all precautions. I have to go back to work on Monday. I thought I should be safe. <laughs> Better to be safe than sorry. Georgie Chumley, 7 News. Australia and some of its closest allies have committed to supplying 1 billion COVID vaccine doses across Asia by the end of next year. The agreement made at the first ever quadrilateral security dialogue meeting last night involving Scott Morrison and US President Joe Biden. Diplomatic strength in numbers. Namaste. Konnichiwa. And from Australia, g'day. World leaders summoned during a global crisis with a united purpose to counter China's growing influence in the Indo-Pacific. It is the Indo-Pacific that will now shape the destiny of our world. Appearing virtually, US President Joe Biden. A free and open Indo-Pacific is essential. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi. We will work together closer than ever before. PM Yoshihide Suga of Japan. I wish to firmly advance our cooperation. And Scott Morrison. Welcome what I think will be a new dawn in the Indo-Pacific. Emerging from the COVID crisis, the leaders agreed to provide one billion doses of the vaccine to developing countries in Southeast Asia by the end of 2022. Australia committing $100 million to the cause. Let us together create a different future. On social media, a not-so-subtle dig. Unconstrained by coercive power. From the White House to the world. The Quad rises to new heights. America's National Security Advisor reveals leaders agreed to meet in person at the end of the year. And they made clear that none of them have any illusions about China. After today's meeting, a celebration for President Biden. His $2 trillion stimulus package now law, prompting the OECD to upgrade US growth forecasts. As the OECD welcomes a new Secretary General, former Finance Minister Matthias Cormann. Beating all nine rivals after a six-month campaign, it's the most senior appointment of an Australian candidate to an international body for decades. This is an incredibly exciting opportunity. Uh, there is a, a big job to be done. Overcoming the odds and cementing Australia's position as a leader on the world stage. Jennifer Beshwati, 7 News. A 17-year-old boy is recovering tonight after being stabbed in Surfer's Paradise. 
Jordan Bissell, he was attacked during a gang fight. Katrina, police say a violent confrontation between two rival gangs broke out just before midnight outside of a tram stop on the corner of Surface Paradise Boulevard and Cavill Avenue. It's alleged a teenager who can't be identified for legal reasons stabbed another boy twice in the back. The victim was rushed to hospital in a serious condition. It's just the latest incident in a recent youth crime wave sweeping the Gold Coast and the state. The accused stabber faced a South Southport Children's Court today while police investigations continue. All right, thank you, Jordan. A family pet remains missing after a fierce blaze destroyed a Gold Coast home. Dramatic footage taken by neighbours shows the Benoa property's roof collapsing after the fire broke out yesterday afternoon. Luckily, nobody was home at the time and fire crews are still investigating. A swimmer has survived a shark attack at a popular tourist spot on the New South Wales south coast. The 63-year-old woman was left bloodied after she was bitten during a morning dip with friends. Michelle Boots, a well-known Marimbula local lucky to survive her morning ritual, bitten by a shark while swimming off Main Beach at 6.45. All of a sudden I just felt this strike. Um, and realised that I'd been bitten by a shark. He just struck and disappeared. The 63-year-old Pambula Surf Life Saving Club Life member and 2020 Bega Citizen of the Year was with two other people. She made it out of the water, bloodied and covered in bite marks. She walked to a nearby cafe to call for help. Paramedics commenced their, uh, uh, their uh, um, treatment. She was stable and um, they commenced first aid by applying uh, pressure bandages. Police and the rescue helicopter brought in to search for the shark. Beaches in a 20 kilometre stretch around Marimbula will be closed until tomorrow. I was just scared in case he was going to have another go at me. Once I realised I was safe, I was fine. Today, Michelle was taken to Bega Hospital. Researchers will look at her wounds to determine what species the shark was. Photographs of the wound, as well as potentially teeth embedded in the lady's body, may give us clues as to the type of species this shark was. The local legend says she'll be back in the water for another swim. It can't hold ocean swimmers back. Hayden Nelson, 7 News. Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews is out of intensive care after breaking his back in a fall. His doctors say there are no plans for surgery, at least for now. Sources have told 7 News Mr Andrews is in a back brace and taking some slow steps with the assistance of a walking frame. And Federal Health Minister Greg Hunt is out of hospital after being treated for an infected leg. He was treated with antibiotics for the painful condition of cellulitis. Mr Hunt has thanked the hospital staff who treated him and he'll be back at work on Monday. George Floyd's family has won an historic damages payment. Minneapolis taking responsibility for his death while being arrested last May. The payout is a record for the city, even larger than the settlement in a recent case involving an Australian woman. How much should an American city pay when its police force is involved in a death as shocking as George Floyd's? He's here with me in my heart. Ten months on, an answer. 27 million US dollars. Because if I could get him back, I would give all of this back. His eight minute, 46 second knee to the neck killing and his dying words, I can't breathe, a rallying cry for global protests. The payout, say his lawyers, spurs other cities weighing limits on the force police can use. They have 27 million reasons now why they should. The amount, a record for Minneapolis, just. Two years ago, the city paid 20 million US to settle the case of Australian Justine Damon Ruzchek. In 2017, a police officer shot and killed her. The Floyd payout comes at a legally sensitive time, halfway through jury selection in the trial of his accused murderer. Derek Chauvin has pleaded not guilty. Some question whether the sacked policeman can now get a fair trial 
when his old employer has so profoundly accepted responsibility. Our black community has endured deep and compounding trauma over this last year. Today, George Floyd's family went to the intersection where he died. The payout, a victory, but a murder trial yet to come and Floyd's still an inspiration way beyond Minneapolis. May George live in power. In the United States, Tim Lester, 7 News. A camper has been killed by a falling tree while on a weekend away at a popular caravan park in Victoria. The 44-year-old man was asleep in his tent when the branch came crashing down. An investigation is now underway with the Big Four Holiday Park in Healesville releasing a statement saying it has a strong safety record and a thorough maintenance program. Pubs across the state have turned green as St Patrick's Day celebrations get underway. The Guinness flowed freely across the southeast despite a limit on numbers. When the doors opened at Irish Murphy's, the day began in earnest. Best Guinness in town. Many Irish haven't been able to head home because of the pandemic. Hopefully we can sort of mimic what they do back at home as best they can comes together when they need to, you know, and, and we want to have fun, so we love it. A big day for traditional Gaelic football. Today is our biggest day of recruitment. At Gilhooley's, they danced into the afternoon <laughs> as sales of Irish brews skyrocketed. I killed Kenny. How much Guinness do you sell today compared to other beers? Oh, look, it's a lot more. Uh, five, six to one, I think. <laughs> In Caxton Street, the Irish Pipers set the mood outside, the big movers inside. With number restrictions, the Big Street Parade was cancelled, but about 100 still marched down Caxton Street. Get out anyway and, uh, and be social and do what we normally do. A popular day to celebrate. Steve Tipness, 7 News. Now let's take a quick weather check. Here's Bertie. Yes. Oh, I tell you what, Kat, we're getting into the jig down here and we've got Clint on his stand-up paddleboard. Everybody, what a magnificent day across the southeast and round two being the Sunday is going to kick it pretty hard as well. Let's take a look at today's temperatures because we had a high of 28 to 29 degrees across most coastal regions. Also in the city, but have a look at Ipswich, everybody, climbing into the low 30s. Hey, tomorrow, absolutely gorgeous. Make the most of it. We are set to see a big change on Monday. Showers and rain on the way. Details a little later. Katrina. All right, thanks, Bertie. Well, it's a crime that sent shockwaves around the world. A police officer charged over the kidnapping and murder of a young British woman. Incredible pictures the moment lightning strikes Sydney Harbour. In the middle of a war zone, deadly violence as the latest rallies erupt in Myanmar. And up to sport, the Aussie skydivers soaring to new heights. Webby and Gilly are back. The Enforcer and the axe telling it like it is. From wooden spoon to making the finals is not impossible. The inside word and tips. Out of the three Queensland teams, I think they'll finish the highest. From the league experts you want on your team. Only on 7 News, nightly at 6. Storms put on a spectacular display above Sydney last night. A lightning bolt almost struck ferries in Circular Quay. The light show stretched from Illawarra, just south of the capital, to the state's mid-north coast. The slow-moving systems also delivered a drenching, with drivers forced to navigate flash flooding. A London police officer has been charged with the kidnap and murder of marketing executive Sarah Everard. The 33-year-old disappeared while walking home last week. Her body found hidden on the city's outskirts. Bright and beautiful, strong and principled. That's how Sarah Everard's family described her the day they were told she had been murdered. London's assistant police commissioner, visibly shaken, would emerge just hours later to confirm it was one of his own who had allegedly killed Sarah. A serving police constable has tonight been charged with the kidnap and murder of Sarah Everard. Wayne Cousins, a 48-year-old diplomatic protection officer responsible for guarding Number 10 Downing Street, foreign embassies, even royal events, 
questioned but not stood down over an indecent exposure incident in a fast food store just three days before Sarah vanished. Her body was found dumped in bushland, those remains identified overnight. Everard hadn't been seen since last week when she vanished while walking home from a friend's house in Clapham, an area popular with Australian tourists and expats. Like everybody, I'm shocked and appalled. I think that the whole country will be united in uh, their feeling for her friends, uh, her family, and will share their shock and, and their grief. Shock and grief, which is spreading well beyond the UK. The fear women experience walking alone in public after dark echoed on social media across the world. We have all made phone calls, both real and fake. We have all held our keys between our fingers. A woman should have been allowed to walk home. This post shared two million times today. Wayne Cousins will face court in a few hours as investigators try to piece together Sarah's final moments alive. Christian Galpset, 7 News. We've been given an incredible insight into the deadly violence erupting in Myanmar. A protester wearing a head-mounted camera documented the moment activists sparked another clash. Demonstrators wore plastic helmets and carried makeshift shields, shooting fireworks and throwing petrol bombs against heavily armed security. Torrential rain has left thousands homeless in Peru. Residents forced to escape the flooding on makeshift rafts, with roads cut off and rivers overflowing. Firefighters rescued one elderly woman trapped inside her house when a wall collapsed. Neighbours heard her cries for help. She was found shivering from hours spent in the rain. Ipswich City Council's Anzac Day backflip, why veterans were told to pay for traffic control during commemorations. The daredevil cliff diver taking a leap of faith to chase her dream. Victim or villain, the push to change how Ned Kelly is remembered. And before weather, TV screens keep getting bigger, but does size really matter? Thirty years ago this weekend. Flashback, 7 News, Sunday at 6. Ipswich Council has admitted its support for local veterans is inadequate, vowing to change its policy on Anzac Day funding. Organising committees were told by a bureaucrat they'd have to pay for their own traffic control because the city only provided financial support for the CBD march. And we feel that this is clearly inadequate, so we've been working with the CEO to change this policy to make sure that all those services are supported properly. Mayor Theresa Harding, who is a veteran herself, has promised her council will pay for all Anzac Day road closures in Ipswich. Almost 150 years after being murdered by Ned Kelly, police are honouring one of their own, wanting the outlaw remembered as a villain, not a victim. Thomas Lonigan was one of three officers killed by Kelly in Wash until the Eastern Freeway tragedy was the force's darkest day. New police holding cells named after the victim of an old murder. <laughs> For Thomas Lonigan's family, finally some justice after almost 150 painful years. Very proud to be here. It's a great honour and it does a lot to rectify that injustice. Mm. I think it's very powerful. In the 1878 Stringy Bark Creek Massacre, recreated in the world's first feature film, the father of four was one of three police officers gunned down by Ned Kelly and his gang. Murdered by an evil and despicable criminal group. And that's what they were. They were murderers, thieves, um, a great risk to the community. Yet Kelly is idolised in folklore his victims largely forgotten. That leaves families suffering. And this goes on through the generations because of that loss. The unique memorial inspired by Erin Tunstall, Lonigan's great-great-grandson recently retired after 43 years on the force. Certainly the way they've commemorated today is really quite an emotional and very stirring. 
The Kelly massacre was Victoria's worst loss of police life until last year's Eastern Freeway tragedy left four dead, uniting mourning police across the generations. Time doesn't diminish the loss that, that you've suffered and certainly time won't diminish the loss that we feel for what happened on April the 22nd last year. We will never stop trying to remember um, all of our brave souls. Nick McCallum, 7 News. Western Australian Premier Mark McGowan was campaigning right up to Election Day today on the hustings turning a few democracy sausages. He's expected to secure victory in the state without a snag, with a 10.5% swing to Labor predicted. Opposition leader Zach Kirkup says he'll abandon politics if he loses his seat. She's an adrenaline junkie who leaps from spectacular heights, but COVID put a hold on doing what she loves. Now the daredevil diver is chasing her dream of achieving a fifth world title in cliff diving. Globally, it's regarded as a dangerous sport, but there are others who say it's sheer madness. We're diving from cliffs, we're diving from buildings, I've dived from helicopters, so it can, it can be all different things. So that's, that's what I really love about the sport. Not to mention jumping from over 20 metres and hitting speeds of up to 80 k's an hour. I pop my head out of the water and I go, oh wow, that was amazing, I want to go up there and I want to tackle that fear again. The 29 year old's been diving since she was nine. Two decades of living life as a daredevil. One reason why she's won the last four world titles. This woman you're seeing right here has earned validation as the greatest of all time. You need a lot of diving experience to go up and, and to dive at those heights where it is way more dangerous. But the pandemic stopped her, COVID canning the entire 2020 season. I was a bit lost in the beginning. We're hopeful for 2021. I'm going to go for it and try and get back into that mental place that I was in in 2019. That journey starts here in Queensland with an annual pre-season trip from our hometown of Newcastle. I just come up here to, to you know, regain my motivation and uh, get back into the groove of things. I want to be ready to, to start and to kick some more goals. Pat Welch, seven years. He's in a league of his own, the Aussie baseballer taking the US by storm, just how much his new deal is worth. The Queen looks to the heavens to find relief from troubled times for the royals and how the size of your television screen could be affecting your eyesight. Tomorrow on Weekender, deep in the Dane Tree. I look around, there's a painting everywhere. Tomorrow at 5.30 on 7. Let's check fuel cars now. Drivers should fill up the tank while we're in the cheap phase of the cycle. The average price of unleaded in Brisbane is $1.32, while on the Gold Coast it's $1.31. Well, you might not know Liam Hendricks' name, but in the US, he's kind of a big deal. The Aussie baseballer has pitched himself into the record books, signing a $70 million contract to play for the Chicago White Sox. But our freshly minted superstar has told Seven News he almost gave up on his sporting dream. Of Hendricks trying to dig deep too. Mazzara takes strike three called. He's the Aussie Major League star who's strong-armed his way into baseball history. Well, Liam Hendricks liked it right out of the hand. Mum and dad were ecstatic. They were over the moon. And rightly so. Their son, Liam Hendricks, now worth a record-shattering $70 million. Got him swinging with a slider, and that's the ball game. His three-year Chicago White Sox deal, the highest ever for a relief pitcher. I, think, I don't think it'll kick in until I first get, get that first paycheck. And 96 miles an hour, and that's how the ball game ends. His value skyrocketing after helping Oakland Athletics to last year's division title. Strike three called, and a win a long time coming for the A's franchise. I finally got a chance to choose. I mean, I hadn't had a chance to choose which organization I was going to go to since I first went over to the States. That was 14 years ago, leaving Western Australia to pursue a dream that at times looked more like a nightmare. Ouch. Ditched by four teams in five seasons. Do you reflect on those days now, or is it all pretty much you're just looking ahead the whole time? Do you reflect on where you've come from? Better that. I mean, I, I think you have to look back. I mean, it's just going to repeat itself. The result, not bad for a kid from Perth who grew up with one thing on his mind. Was born basically kicking a footy. 
His dad, Jeff, a former West Perth Footy Club champion, encouraged his son to try other sports. This spot here is where Liam used to practice for hours every day. That was the baseball zone. And it's paying dividends. Liam rubbing shoulders with our highest paid sports stars. We did the mathematics on my, my current salary. So I have to work till I'm 412 to make the same salary. Now, on the eve of this year's Major League season, Australia's freshly minted sporting superstar determined to pay back the faith. I need to go out there and, and try and earn every single dollar I'm making by making sure I go out there every single day, ready to go, ready to make sure I'm putting my best foot forward. In the United States, David Woywood, 7 News. Shaking off the controversy surrounding the royal family, the Queen is looking to the stars. Joining an online event as part of British Science Week, Her Majesty briefed on the latest updates from Mars. And I think it's fascinating to see the pictures of Mars. Um, unbelievable, really, to, to think one can actually see its surface. Scientists and school kids all delighted by the Queen's first appearance since Harry and Meghan's bombshell interview. Coming up, taking things to a whole new level, the skydivers who've smashed two Aussie records. And the demand for big screen TVs is growing, but does size really matter? Let's check sport now. Here's Pat. Katrina, thank you. Hello, everyone. Ahead, the bullets in a clutch match. Is the hype around the Titans justified? Can there be good news from a round one loss? In the, in the Broncos' case, yes. And a day for Queensland racing to celebrate Group One glory. Relief has swept across the Broncos despite remaining winless since July last year. Xavier Coates and John Asiata, hospitalised in last night's loss to Parramatta, have been cleared of serious injury. Matt Lodge won't return immediately, but there was optimism as the Walters' reign began. 28,000 ushered in the new era. They upped the hype metre at the cauldron. Kevy had them pumped, and still they started like this. It's going to be a forward pass. Oh, no. Fortunately, it got better. Milford and Croft did what Walters had ordered and took control. Back against the grain, David Mead. With the Eels and their fans in shock, Milford struck again and again. What a kick, what a catch. A great Broncos try. You know, I think Anthony Milford played one of his better games for a long, long time. Kicked well. Then this for the X Factors second. What a pass from Milford. We've got a lot of trust and a lot of faith in Milf, and, um, you know, he'll, he'll get better too. He's had a, a rough year last year, and he'll get some confidence out of tonight. But that was the beginning of the end. Coates' crash was sickening. Lands on his head in an awkward position. Asiata crumpled in a delayed reaction. He needed the stretcher, and like Coates, was hospitalised. Lodge's bad luck continued, but the coach couldn't elaborate. I don't have hamstrings, Pete, so I don't, I don't know much about him, mate. Not tall enough. Some will accuse Brisbane of yet another second-half fade-out, but with three injured, that would be harsh criticism. Of course, Gutherson is there. They manned up in defence time after time, and it was only brute Ferguson force which turned the match. And somehow, somehow gets it down inside. Oh, I feel really proud about our guys just hanging in there. Now they must put that aside and prepare for a derby next Friday. Where the Titans will also be looking for their first win of 2021 after almost failing to fire a shot against the Warriors. Well, the Roosters annihilated Manly at the SCG in Gosford. The Coast's high-profile recruits were MIA. The Warriors home away from home until at least June. All eyes on how much redecorating the Titans' wrecking balls would do. But in 30-degree heat, Big Tino and Fafita melted. Rattling shot there from Peta Hiku. The first half an energy zapping grind. The coach camped on the Kiwis line but couldn't convert. Taylor held up before Fudawaka coughed up. The Warriors made it look easy. Here is Siren and oh, he great. does hit and spin. The game failed to reach any great heights. The Titans kept applying pressure. Who's still going, David Fafita, then loses the ball in the tackle. Only to invite League's nomads through the front door. To Leeson, oh, now he'll crash across. Off the bench, barnstorming Bunty gave a lesson on how it's done. Peter Bunty, a foe, links up with Cody Nikarima. 18-0, the Titans finally fired a shot with six minutes to go. We were the ones that leaked the, you know, little 
barge over tries and we couldn't come up with any ourselves. So uh, that was a difference in the game. No love lost at the SCG as some things never change, like the first touch from the world's best fullback. Oh, He'd finish with a hat trick. So too Brett Morris, the Roosters winger, now fourth on the all-time try scoring list. He's got there. This is scary. The nightmare got worse as the right side carved up. Back to Tedesco. He's got three. Ben Davis, Seven News. The Bullets have lost their chance to win the NBL Cup, frustrated tonight by the Sydney Kings. Brisbane needed to win and grab bonus points. Law wants the three ball and knocks it down. How about that? That was the first bonus then, as he's done right through the NBL Cup. Nathan Sovey went to work. He had 18 points by half time, and the Bullets led by eight. He finished with 35, a season high, but Casper Ware blunted all his good work and sent Brisbane to an agonising loss. It's been a stunning day for Queensland Racing. The Cairns Cult Horse mixed it with Australia's finest and emerged reputation enhanced while champion trainer Tony Gollard revelled in Group 1 glory. A party for the world's richest mile and the Herovians' connections dared to dream. For a moment, the NQ champ challenged but finished a gallant fifth as Russian Camelot and Mugatu went to war. Stride for stride, Mugatu fights, Mugatu for New South Wales, one on Starbound, three by a half. A couple in the nationwide competition won $250,000. The jockey of Winks added to his phenomenal Mooney Valley record. In Sydney, Tony Gollan brought Crone to a $600,000 Group 1. And Crone takes the lead in the Coolmore. Crone draws clean out from Mizzy. It's a Queensland victory. From the 600 when she just started to suck up underneath him and he cut the corner beautifully and... Once the run presented, she was, she was really just too good. And Rockhampton's rising star, Sweet Dolly, is now four from four. This the biggest, the half-million-dollar Aquas Jewel. Sweet Dolly's in front near the line. She holds on. Yes, she wins again, Sweet Dolly. And that's not spray, that's sand, one of the hazards of testing near the Bahrain Desert. Daniel Ricardo's already feeling good at McLaren. His new car was fastest in the first session and seventh overall after the opening day. The medal rush continues for Australia's winter stars. This morning at Aspen, Tess Cody won bronze at the Snowboard Slope Style World Championships. The women are like on another level at the moment and I'm just really excited to be a part of that. It's been so sick. Cody joins the great Tora Bright as the only Aussie medalist in the event. Queensland's Jason Day sits six shots behind leader Lee Westwood after the second round at the Players' Championship. A day for eagle spotters at Sawgrass included Denny McCarthy's hole-in-one at the third and Brendan Todd's ace with a five-wood to the 194-metre eighth hole. Front hole location, easiest hole location on the green. But maybe not quite that easy. <laughs> No great mishaps at the Island Hole today, but Mark Leishman was a victim, missing the cut by one shot. While Sergio Garcia might have to rethink putting with his eyes closed. Didn't work that time. That's our sport. <laughs> Thank you. Well, a Queensland skydiver has fallen faster than any other woman in Australia. Natisha Dingle reached a freefall speed of almost 474 kilometres per hour above Tugulawa during the Australian Championships last Saturday, beating her own national record. A second Australian record was broken by a Victorian team who managed to build 19 formations before deploying their parachutes. Well, the small screen just keeps on getting bigger. But are these giant televisions easy on the eye? That report coming up next. We are set for a fantastic end to the weekend. All your weather details, plus my outside report, after the break. Queensland bikies risking their lives Still got a lot of enemies out there by reforming their lives and shredding their gang colours. Escaping gangs like the Banditos and the Finks isn't easy. Inside the Police Bikie Exit Program, exclusive pictures and interviews in a major 7 News investigation, Monday.
Returning to today's main story now, and a deep clean is underway at the Morning After Cafe in West End. One of four venues attended by a doctor confirmed to have COVID-19. The doctor also worked at the PA hospital and visited the Stones Corner Hotel, Corporate Box Gym in East Brisbane and Cooparoo McDonald's while infectious. Hospitals and aged care centres across Greater Brisbane will be locked down for at least 72 hours. Anyone with symptoms is urged to get tested. When it comes to televisions, bigger is increasingly better, with the demand for huge screens more than tripling in recent years. But is there such a thing as too big? The small screen just keeps getting bigger. But are these giant televisions easy on the eye? We know that sitting too close to screens can cause problems, vision developing into short-sightedness. Sitting too far can also cause a problem. So how big is best? Standard human vision is about 160 degrees, but our cone of detail, so the amount of detail that we can see at one time, is about 40 degrees. If you were to draw a 40 degree arc, uh, it should hit both sides of the TV. Sony recommends sitting 2.1 metres away from a 55-inch screen in high definition and 2.3 metres from a 60-inch. But in 4K, the viewing distance range starts at 1.2 metres for a 65-inch TV. Most people in most living rooms are further than that easily. According to JB Hi-Fi, the 65-inch reigns supreme as the most popular television size for Aussie homes. But the 75 and 85-inch screens are on the up and are currently the fastest growing segments of the business. Um, but we have so many customers that will purchase something smaller than what we recommend based on where their viewing is in the home and so many people come back and go, no, you're right, I need to get bigger. In 4K, surprisingly, as the screens get bigger, the recommended distances get smaller due to more pixels. For a 75 inch, you should sit at least 1.4 metres away, an 85 inch screen, 1.6. With regular breaks also recommended. Amber Laidler, 7 News. Weather and all the coastal information now. Here's Bertie. Thanks for that, Kat. G'day, everybody. What a beautiful start to the weekend. I can assure you tomorrow is set to be even better. But make the most of it because we're set to see five days of showers starting with some rain periods Monday into Tuesday. We'll get into that shortly. First, let's take a quick look at today's temperatures. We're at hit around 30 degrees in the western districts, 31 around Ipswich, 29 in the city, and around 28 degrees to 29 coastal regions. To the charts here, you can see that vigorous inland trough making its way through the central interior. That's moving towards the eastern seaboard. Now, that's going to impact areas in the southern majors, mainly Canberra and Sydney, with a cold front pushing through tomorrow. That's going to stretch into our neck of the woods on Monday through to the uh, at least Thursday or Friday. With that, we'll see temperatures dropping down to the low 20s. Perfect weather but a few showers and some rain periods with that as well. Tomorrow however we're going to see partly cloudy conditions before that trough arrives so make the most of it and uh, definitely step outside if you can. Around the nation now like I mentioned it's going to be wet for Sydney and Canberra down to around 19 degrees. Partly cloudy for Melbourne also for Hobart 7 to 19 there. Storms typical for Darwin this time of the year 31 and fine for Perth 30 degrees. Back to the tropics now. Partly cloudy for Cairns, Mackay and Townsville looking pretty good up there. Tops of around 30 to 31 degrees. However the top end of that trough's going to drive some storms through to Mount Isa, stretching all the way further south. Longreach, Roma, Emerald, yep, you're all in for it. Even Stanthorpe could see some late afternoon activity and possibly Toowoomba. But uh, the coastal region's looking okay. Have a look at that for our southeast coasts. 29 to 30 degrees, getting up to 30 on the Gold Coast. Uh, 29 for the Sunshine Coast, 33 for Ipswich, 31 for uh, Logan, down to 20 degrees tonight, 20 to 31 for Beer Barham. On the water, northwest, northeast winds, 15 to 20 knots. Looking good out there, nice and early. Seas 1.5 metres, 31 the top in the city tomorrow. 21 tonight, quite mild, beautiful to sleep in. And looking ahead, here it comes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, wet, down to 25 the highs. Ipswich, very similar, overcast and wet for Monday, Tuesday, 26 degrees. Gold Coast, wet on Monday. Bring the brollies out. 25, similar for Tuesday. Sunshine Coast, little change. It's going to drop down to 25 on Tuesday as well. Let's check the waterways for tomorrow. For the surface tomorrow, hit those open stretches. Small swelled magnets. There's not a lot on offer at the moment. It's around waist height. However, by Monday afternoon into Tuesday, a new southerly forecast to move up the southeast coast. So that'll generate a newly formed swell. Water temp just under 26 degrees. Top end of sunshine. Kings, Spit, TOS, and of course, D-Bar. Tweedback Beach is worth a look as well. 
Now, if you're going out for a day in the water, pretty good conditions from the air. Have a look at that. The Cooma River this morning, littered with mud crabs. Gee, there's some good crabbing around at the moment after the recent rain activity. Been some good catches of uh, estuary fish around the Southport Seaway, Narang River, Malula. Thank you for that. Coastal sport fishing charters and Gold Coast River charters. And for those heading offshore, a general mixed bag of reefies, including marlin, dolphin fish and kingies. Thank you, Sea Probe. And that is all from us this Saturday. Thanks for your company from all the team. Have a wonderful night. See you tomorrow.